expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Welcome to the hit show, Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you struggling with loss? Are you willing to challenge everything you've been taught about life and death? Beyond Proof Radio is a space that explores beyond current self-limiting beliefs surrounding loss, offering radical healing, which will come from the least likely of places. Join Angie on her journey, which includes science, medicine, and spirituality, proving that the body is merely a shell of our soul. It's possible to create an amazing life from the depths of pain. It's your life. It's your choice. Now, here's your host. Good morning, my beautiful listeners. Welcome to another program of Beyond Proof with me, Angie, as your host. Today, I am so honored and I am humbled and I'm sure there are going to be tears. There is going to be laughter. This is promising to be a roller coaster probably of a lot of emotions uh, as I bring my two guests, Kane and Cody Pearson on the show. And you guys, you never know like who is listening to the programs until I started receiving the emails and the private Facebook messages. And I'm reminded of why I've been called to do what I've been called to do. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your love, your kindness. Everything I do is spoken from the depths of my heart, my soul. Um, I have one blog up. I don't promote heavily on social media because I'm probably out of fear because I know what we are going to share today and what I've shared with you guys before is very different. And I found my joy in sharing my journey and meeting amazing people along the way, like my guest I'm bringing on uh, in just a bit. What death has taught me, you guys, is to love to love with all my heart. Um, it, it spills over into our tears. It has taught us to love each other. We wake up in the morning and you know that if they're gone, their physical presence, and I think my guests will agree with me, when we lose someone, we don't want to have those regrets I wish I would have said, I wish I wouldn't have thought so much about myself and more about him or her. I wish I would have done things differently. I wish I would have gone to dinner. You guys, there are no regrets. They're just lessons learned. So with that, I bring on my beautiful, beautiful guest. First, Cody. I should say first, Kanae, because she's the one that I really know. Hi, Kanae. Hi, Angie. How are you? I am good. And Cody, how are you? It's right. It's so great to meet you, too. It is great to meet you, too. Oh, you two have never formally met. No, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you both. And I just am so amazed. You guys sit back. We're going to have such a great time. I think where I want to start with this, you guys, is showing you that these two women have lost considerably. Their families have lost considerably. And what they have done with their loss is amazing. But we're going to go into that later. First, Kane, I want to bring you on. And if you can talk to my listeners a little bit, who are you? Um, who are you? Talk, tell us who, who Kane is. Uh, I am a God-fearing woman. Um, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I give everything I got. Um, I'm a, I don't know, I don't know how to describe myself. I think, I think it's you best. Can see it's beautiful. She's absolutely beautiful. And what do you think the best descriptor? Not what you do, but who you are. I'm a fighter. 
I fight All every right. day. Every day. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry right now because I know, I know. And Cody, welcome and tell us a little bit, who are you? And you guys are twin sisters, right? Yes. Are. How many hours, minutes apart? Four minutes apart. <laughs> Very twinish. <laughs> <laughs> So, Cody, who are you besides Kanae's sister? Um, I am Reagan's mother. I have a two-year-old daughter, so I like to uh, acknowledge her, definitely. I'm a mother. I'm a believer. And I'm also a, a broken vessel that is finding her way and learning how to maneuver everything that she's been through because... I found out raising a daughter, I can't pour into her if I'm empty. So that's just how I like to look at myself, a mother and a, and a believer and a vessel that's willing to be poured into so I can pour into as well. Wow. Thank you for that. And you guys, if you could just know the depths of where these guys go. And this is where I want to go, Kane, how we met. How we met. How? Angie. <laughs> you know, we met the summer of 2018. Zach, your son Zach, and you were my last table of the evening, and I was your waitress at a restaurant that I was serving at. It was Applebee's. TGI Fridays. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think you were listening. Oh, we loved it. It was right. You guys, let me back up the bus. Zach and I decided to go ride roller coasters. And we were in Sandusky, Ohio. And that's where you guys both live, right? Yes. yes. And you guys, these aren't just any roller coasters. These are like the top, fastest, tallest roller coasters in the world. So I'm a good mom. And I needed, <laughs> I needed Kane to remind me of that. Do you remember our conversation, Kane? So I noticed that Zach had excused herself from the table um, while I was fulfilling drinks and getting napkins for you. I noticed that you seemed a little flustered and my spirit just kept pulling to you. So after I got all my tables out, I sat in Zach's seat and I, I began asking you how your day was, what brings you here. And in the midst of me like filling your drinks and giving you napkins, you kept referring to me as baby doll. Yeah, baby doll, you guys. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought it was just a pet, like a pet name, you know, like a general term that you call everyone. And you guys, but, if you know me, I don't have pet names, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you know sometimes people call people sweetheart and stuff, yeah exactly right so you kept calling me baby doll and as we continued to talk it got more like my conversation got clouded by you just calling me baby doll so then you you, you paused and you said does anyone that you know or anyone you used to know refer to you, and I quote, as baby doll or baby something. So tears just instantly started falling. And I said, my father used to call me baby girl. That was my name. Never called me nay. Never. It's just baby girl all the time. And you guys, to, to back up the bus, and you know what? Um, hey, Kat, this is my producer. I'm going to bring her in real quick. Hey, Kat. Hi, Angie. Hey, you know what? Is Can you hear a little bit of an echo? Yeah, um, I was going to take care of that at the next break. Okay, so let's do that. We hear a little bit of an echo, you guys, so we apologize for a little bit of audio. We'll fix it at the next break. Um, but Kane is right, and you guys, we didn't know each other. Kane, I never met this woman. I went in and we were sitting at the TGI Fridays. And I'm like, I'm ordering a beer. 
She goes, how was your day? And I don't even remember this. I was so mad at Zach that morning. I said, you "You guys, I'm taking a roller coaster. I'm riding like 120 mile an hour roller coasters. We walk out the door that morning. And I said, I'm going to put some bottled water. It's just, can you bring out your backpack? He goes, you're just a typical white mom. I'm like, (laughs) oh my God. (laughs) I was, you guys, I'm like, really? And I was telling Kane all this. I don't know if you remember this, Kane. But I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I had the tickets. I had the money. I had the water. I'm like, have fun, Zach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I went back into the room, you guys, and I had a nudge. And I could have gotten work done. I could have read a book. 53-year-olds don't really go ride roller coasters all by themselves. And it was this nudge, and it's the same nudge that I think you're talking about, Kane, too, where you just know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, because most of us are too busy doing, 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 and we're wrapped up in our lives, which promises to take us from the stillness where our souls speak. So I shared this with Kane, and you guys were coming up on the break. And Kane, I want you, both you and Cody, I want you guys to sit in this next break to think about who your dad was and who your uncle was in their humanness. So we get an idea of who they are, you guys. And then at the, at the end, we'll kind of go the last two breaks. We're going to go over their project. Um, but Kane, tell me when you when you heard me say baby doll, because you guys, you even asked me, are you a medium? And <laughs> I'm like, no, because they're weird. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what you said. <laughs> and so from that point, though, we had this, and I don't know why, I, I do know, because I feel that the higher, the more that we open our spirits to our loved ones, the more they speak to us and we hear them. Yeah. So, Kane, why don't we start before we go? We have a minute, but um, what was your dad's name? His name was Kenneth Lamont Pearson Sr. Kenneth Lamont Pearson Sr. And Cody, who was your uncle? My uncle was Anthony Lewis Pearson Sr. Okay. And you guys, we have just a minute left, and so... When we come back, I would like, you guys can decide. I want to know who Kenneth was. And I want to honor Kenneth. And I want to know who Anthony was. And we want to honor Anthony. So I want you guys to help bring my listeners to a point so they can see who they are. They're they're human beings. They were living and breathing on this earth and they're gone. In the physical sense. But can you guys do that with me? Think about um, absolutely they, how they were in your life. Um, because sometimes, you guys, when people die, and especially you guys, with, with the, the three of us, we've lost four people. It feels like they were never here yeah. sometimes. Yes. It and does. that's the hardest. It's the the... The, the eyes and the smell and the touch. And that's where our spirits, you guys, that's where they will let us know. And, and Kane, I hope you've had some fun, a little bit of fun uh, signs. Have you had any more signs from your dad or from, from your uncle? You know, remember I touched you about two days after how 111 always pops up every okay, hour. Okay, hold that thought. Okay. You guys, right there is a perfect, okay? So we're ready to head on break. You guys hold that thought. And when we come back, both Kane and Cody, my beautiful guests, as we talk about two brothers, a Pearson project, and their their dad and uncle. discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com author claire candy hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight 
Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth as well as her experiences in the afterlife and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. Hi, I'm Laura Meeks, and the most common problem that my clients face is all work and no play. This is why I created Fly High Living. I help you develop a balanced life plan and guide you to a place where you love to wake up in the morning. Call 888-666-1570 or go to flyhighliving.com to sign up for the four-week Flight Plan for Life course. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to corneliastephanie.com. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. If you have a sense that you are meant for more, join Heather Allison every third Tuesday at noon Pacific as she explores an ancient, forgotten energy within us and helps us access our original archetypal blueprint. The Golden Path will help you remember the key to unlocking your life, love, success, and magic you were meant for. A key to unlocking your Golden Path. Visit heather-allison.com. Welcome back, my beautiful listeners, and welcome back, my beautiful guests, Kane and Cody. And before we went on break, you guys, we wanted to personalize both Kenneth and Anthony, or Kenneth Lamont and Anthony Lewis. So, you guys, did you decide who is going to share daddy? Um, Baby girl, Cheryl. Cheryl. Baby girl. I think you should do it like like this this. because... It's, it's just, just so, so funny, funny how Kenei said, said she's the fighter. And Kenei is the baby. baby. My and uncle Anthony was a fighter and he was the baby, baby brother. brother. So I think Kenei would be the perfect. The per- you would explain, explain him perfectly. perfectly. Just being a baby, the baby, and a fighter. Yeah. Um... Yeah, he was a fighter. He was very feisty. And he always had to have his way. He loved wholeheartedly, but if it wasn't my uncle's way, there was no way at all. For sure. Also, yeah, and I just want to add as well that um, our uncle was uh, battling cancer as well, and he fought through it. So he, that definitely describes my uncle in a nutshell as being a fighter for sure. Yeah. So you guys, okay, so that, so it's just, just a fighter and feisty. Did you, was there, was he a, was he a family man? Was he, did you guys have a big family? Did he, was he kind of lone guy? Okay. Well, my uncle had seven children. 
Um, and he loved every single last one of his children. Uh, but he was a mama's boy, but he also was like, he loved his friends. Aww. His friends meant the world to him. And he would wake up with his brother, uh, Keith, as well. He, they're brothers, but they were best friends. And they fought like cat and dogs, but you wouldn't see him with any other person besides his brother or one of his friends. Wow. Thank you for sharing that part of me. He sounds like a beautiful man. Just, um, he was lucky to have friends. He was lucky to have you guys. Yeah, my dad cradled him a lot. Yeah? Yeah. So, Cody, yeah. do you want to talk about him a little bit? Or Kane? Well, on the flip, flip side, side of my, my uncle being a fighter, a fighter my, my father, was father was a lover. lover. His heart was humongous. He was so gentle and sensible. He, this is, he, he my, my father, father has six children, children three, three girls, and three boys, and he and loved, he loved every, every single one of us. Um, in, in our own individual, individual ways, but he loved us more than anything. He loved family. He loved coming together and just being and just one. Being one. He loved his friends, too. So, and, and this is, I, I want to interject here because you guys, this is huge. It's when we love so deeply as he did his girls and his, um, his three boys, his family, when they die, and I had a woman write you guys, and, and I'm going to share this with you guys. She wrote an email and she said, I am having such a hard time. My mom died and she, um, she said, but I've been told that the more I grieve and the more pain I'm in shows how much I loved her. And I do not believe that that is true. I believe that if, our loved ones on earth loved us unconditionally and loved us so much. They want the best for us in life too. So with this woman and with you guys, with, with your dad and, and your uncle, they want you guys to be happy and honor the happiness. And so it's sort of like when we put them in this box of, well, if I'm sad all the time, it shows how much I love them. It's like we're, we're, t our, we're allowing our uncle, our dad, our sons, our daughters, our mothers to say, I love you so much, but I want you to be in pain the rest of your life because I'm gone. So what have we done with the death? And Kane and Cody, I want you guys to kind of start talking a little bit. You've taken, how has this affected your family? How has this affected your mom, your aunt? Are they still in considerable grief of sadness? Are they coming out of it? Well, with... Uh, my grandma, she, those were her only two boys. She had yeah. my dad and my uncle. So those were her only two boys. We went back in uh, November to see my grandma. She lives in Montgomery, Alabama. And she, she was sad, but she doesn't stay in that place of sorrow. So I, um, we all grieve differently. Absolutely. But I do have to disagree with, because we are hurting and because we're sad that we have, that's the only way that we could show them that we love them or that's how they know that we love them because that's not, that's, I disagree. My grandma, she's definitely still grieving. She, she watches videos of my dad and my uncle all the time. She actually got it on a, a, DV, a DVD disc and she put it in the DVD player and she played it and she cried a little and then she laughed and, I mean, you're going to always miss someone you love, absolutely, but you don't have to stay in that sorrow at all. 
Oh, thank you for that, Cody. Um, you guys in life, our parents, our loved ones want the best for us. And that doesn't change. And just because we're all going through death and we're going through loss and we're going through grief, we will always be sad because we're human. We will always have that moment where we see something and it reminds us of them and we wish they were here to share it with us. But I'm so proud of you guys because you're moving forward and, uh, and, and, Kane, did you have anything you wanted to add to that as well? I agree 100%, you guys. And for the listener who feels that to be in pain is representative of how much you loved them, it's a humanness. And But I don't think they want us to be sad. What do you guys think? I, I don't, I think they were full of life. <laughs> yeah, not at all, not at all. That's my and my dad and my uncle. They they were crybabies. They were. I'm sorry. I know Kenny's supposed <laughs> to be speaking, but they could cry in a heartbeat. And they would cry about something, and then they would hug it out, and they would rejoice, and they would just go and embrace. And I think that's just the most important thing. Like you can definitely take your time to feel the way you want to feel in grief, but. You got to pick yourself up and you got you got to love because love is the greatest of all. Thank you. Oh, you gave me goosebumps just now. And you guys, and that is the message is this unconditional love. And Kane, what do you have to add to this as well? And you guys, first, I want to say, too, because I just want to cry. There's always someone who has it worse than us. There's there are going to be people who don't have it that have not had to deal with suicide or double murders. But look at their mom. She has two boys who are now gone. And I feel that pain. And so can they talk to us a little bit too? What is your thought on grief and, and, and mourning? and But then also finding the joy of what you had with them versus the pain of what you've lost. So I kind of, my, my view kind of differs from Cody's uh, because I felt as if a day went by and I didn't think about my father or I didn't bring him up that he would think that I forgot about him. So I found myself in the bed crying and sulking about losing him because I wanted him to feel close to me, if that makes sense. Right. Yes. I, I, I wanted him to know that, I wanted him to know that, that I thought about him every minute, every hour of every second of the day. So I understand where she says, you know, I understand where she says, like, being in the midst of, like, the pain and the hurt because... I didn't want my father to think that I forgot about him and I just wanted to be close to him. That and is completely understandable, Kane. Yeah. I, I, I completely agree with Cody says, you know, we don't want to dwell and, you know, you know, play like the woe it's me card, but I, I completely wholeheartedly felt what the mother was saying. Yeah. For so sure. let me ask you a question. Because when we were in the restaurant and we had started talking about baby, you know, baby doll, baby girl, and you had shared with me about how, um, and you guys, and this is not like a pat on the back. I, I'm just trying to share this because it goes into how connected Kane and I are. I believe your dad brought me to that restaurant that night. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I remember, and I'm going to share this with you guys, because um, I remember you saying, Kane, too, that your dad wanted that you ask for a bedroom set. And Kane is going to college, and she didn't have a bedroom set. And I'm sure when he died, you felt so horrible because you're sitting here, a bedroom set. But you guys, the bedroom set became significant. It did. 
Um, so four hours, it was our first day of the semester at college in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Um, got out of class, called my father like, hey, hey, daddy, how are you? He asked how our first day of class went. Um, and I asked him like, hey, dad, um, do you have the money for my bedroom set? You know, and he took a sigh and he said, oh, yeah, I did say that, baby girl. I did say that. I did say that. And he has this thing where he just constantly repeats himself. (laughs) So we were at my friend Morgan Johnson's house at the time. And I said, daddy, you promised me that you would get me this bedroom set. You never fall through when I need you to. And that's all you had to do was get me my bedroom set. And he said, I understand, baby girl. I did say that. And I hung up on him. And then that's when, four hours later, he was pronounced dead in front of his house. He was murdered in front of his house. So I was telling Angie about that. And Angie, oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Angie. This is real, you guys. This this is what it feels like. Are you okay, sweetheart? (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry, because a lot of people don't know that, you know, only you and a select few, because that sticks with me. Like, four hours before he passed, I hung up on him because he didn't get me the bedroom set that he promised me, you know? So I told Angie about it, and Angie uh, wrote me a check out for $297 and said that that was from my father, that it wasn't from her, that he was speaking through her for the bedroom set that I wanted because did, the bedroom... Did that help you, Kane? Did that, in that instant, because I didn't know you. I didn't know your dad. I didn't know your story. But there was a tug at my heart that said, I want to... It, it, it was weird. I didn't... It was just... I don't go to church. So it's like a whole bunch of years in a collection basket. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. All it was. yeah. You know, I don't go and put the the money in a in a in a velveteen lined, you know, basket. You guys, death has taught me, and I'm hoping that you guys, because of what you're doing with your project, you guys, death has the ability to propel us into this unconditional love. And it was just, it was, I have never felt so much joy. So, Kane, I'm hoping that that, our conversation led you to believe that your dad is trying to let you know that he is, he loves you so much. Yeah. That helped me to forgive myself. Thank you. You, you, you navigate, like, you... It wasn't even the monetary value of it. It was the fact that you you gave me what I needed to forgive myself because I was holding. Because at that point, um, last year around the summertime when we talked, it was three years, and I held that in my heart. I I faulted myself for that for the entire three years that he was gone at the time about me hanging up on him four hours prior to prior to his murder. So I thank you. Kane, but do you see what you've done for my listeners too? Is you guys, that's the key word. It's forgiveness. It's forgiveness for them, but ultimately it's forgiveness for ourselves. And Kane, you're a perfect, perfect example of You guys, we're all going to feel pain and grief, and it hurts. I could look at a piece of scotch tape, and I started bawling in my kitchen because that is where Jan was putting up lights to see where they would match, and the tape was still there. You guys, three years later, and I'm crying in the middle of my kitchen floor. So, Kane, this is our new normal. Yeah. But I'm hoping now, Cody, 
are you seeing, are you guys seeing any signs from your dad and uncle that are just like, oh my God, <laughs> have you got to that point yet? Um, <clears throat> after uh, you helped me, I know that the night of, because for some reason you and I talked for a while and I remember I sent you a text like, hey, I'm, I'm scared. Like, I was scared to go to sleep. I was scared to close my eyes. And I didn't know why I was scared because that was my father. Why am I scared to see him or feel him? So I remember um, after leaving and just laying in my bed, looking at the ceiling and bawling my eyes out, telling my mother and my sister about, about you, I finally fell asleep probably about four o'clock that morning and he came to me in a dream and we were sitting on a curb and he had on a white t-shirt and some jeans and he just looked so happy. And I asked him, I said, Hey daddy, like, how are you? And he said, I'm having a ball. Oh. And that was the whole dream. I mean, the dream felt like ours, but that was, that was the dream. He told me he was having a ball. How and did you feel after that? Did you, do you, after that moment, did that give you the peace and solace that you may have needed to, to move forward in more of a, not a mourning state, but more of a joyful? Absolutely. Thing? And then I wanted, I wanted more, like I, I wanted to, to, to find a way that I could connect with him more and talk to him more. And now I remember I, um, probably a month after we met, I told you that I was seeing 111 everywhere. Like on the, <laughs> right. every time, yeah, every time I looked at my clock, I seen license plates just, and my birthday is January, or our birthday is January 11th. And I remember you told me that, um, that is, that, that numbers are significant and that we were going to discuss it a little bit. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, belated happy birthday, January 11th. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, so, oh, my gosh, Kane. And then Cody. Now, are you on that same? I mean, it's. It, are you talking to your dad and your uncle as well? Or how are you How are you dealing with, with the loss? Well, a year after about a year after well no I got pregnant a little around after the time that we had lost my dad and um, my due date was August 30th and my dad got murdered on the 25th so I felt like that was like one of the first signs uh, of just losing my father was me bearing my first child because she was due around the time we lost him. Wow. So um, I feel like that had that was a sign. Honestly, I told my OB that I wanted to have her on the 25th and he told me, no, that that was weird. So she ended up coming two weeks early and she has a little gap like my dad. Um, mm -hmm. Just little things like that. I did have a dream about him as well, but I couldn't speak with him or talk to him. But we were around family, and he was just engaging with family. Like, he could speak to us, but we could not speak with him. And that just let me know that, yeah, he he's always – that the, the message that I got from that was that he's always around. Yes. Regardless of if I could – and that was the thing. I would try to hug him in my dream, and I couldn't hug him. And I couldn't talk to him, but I could feel him. And I know that he's always with me. I know that if I am missing him or if I want to speak with him, I can do so. And he'll hear me, even if he cannot physically hear on this earth, speak back to me at all. Beautiful. So you guys, if, you, if you're listening... Um, this is absolutely so key because we have two different viewpoints, two different experiences, and we're all in this together. It connects all of us. It, death connects all of us. And this is where a lot of the work that I'm trying to do is to say, 
we have been taught for so much of our lives what to believe when it comes to death and dying and how to grieve. And you guys, we can change our mindsets. And you guys are doing that. And you started the the Two Brothers Pearson Project. And we are not going to get into it because we have three minutes. So we're going to finish up here. But you guys, what before we had a break, what do you want people to know about your project? Maybe just in a in a just briefly before we'll we'll get into the depth of it and the meat of it in the next in the next segment. What do you want people to know about murder, about guns, about someone on the other side of that gun who's a father, a brother, a a, a, a son, a daughter? Um, well, just from a broad uh, pers- spectrum, guns in America is a huge issue. Um, Suicide is a huge issue, and the number one cause of death in the United States is suicide due to guns. So if we could just educate more people about just the effects that guns has on not just the victims, but the loved ones and everyone that are connected to them, that we could take a step in the right direction because we we've lost people to guns. We, we actually, we have a friend that's in prison right now because of murder. So we've dealt with it from every angle and it's just more so we're not anti guns at all. We are pro peace and it's so, it's just about peace. Honestly, it's about love and it's about, just enlightening people about the effects from every aspect and every angle. Absolutely. Beautiful. Kane, do you have anything to add to that? She basically hit the nail on the head. Um, we're not anti-guns at all. We are pro-peace. And mental health is such a factor that plays a part and everything I feel at, like, because we we do lose that loved one. And oftentimes, and I know from experience, I lost myself after I lost my father and my uncle. And I know that suicide as well, because, I mean, I've dealt with suicidal ideation. And, you know, I just feel like we want to marry mental health awareness with gun awareness, Very you know? Good. Yeah, for sure. Very good. And so where do you want people to go to learn more? Before we go on our break, you guys, this is your time to plug. Where do people go to find and learn more about your your project? Well, we are... <laughs> We are uh, in the process of getting our 501c3. Uh, that should be up here within the next month or so. So, yeah. Yep, we're, we're looking into open a facility in our hometown, also where my uncle got mur- murdered here in Sandusky, Ohio, where we were well, off offer a bunch of services for uh, people, a lot of people. I know we have a <laughs> like a few seconds left, but we'll go much more into detail soon about it for sure after the commercial. Yep, after the commercial break, you guys, when we come back, um, we'll talk more about Two Brothers, a Pearson project, and how they are taking their grief and not only moving forward in their own grief, but also being able to share with with others and help heal others. What an amazing, amazing success story from the depths of loss um, to just this magical um, moment of healing for, for all of us. So thank you guys for what you do. And when we come back, we will go more into detail with um, Two Sisters Speaks on Two Brothers. And it's um, Two Brothers, a Pearson Project when we come back. Are you tired? 
tired of being bloated and nauseous? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know eating unhealthy foods eventually leads to an unhealthy digestive system? Did you know eating the most healthy, nutritious food doesn't necessarily result in a healthy body? The stomach must be healthy in order to properly digest, metabolize, and utilize even the best of nutrition. Without proper digestion from the stomach through the intestinal tract, the nutritious value is not absorbed, and the improperly digested food can be more toxic to your body than helpful. You can be doing all the right things and getting all the wrong results. In fact, other organs may also be interfering with your stomach's ability to digest. With CRA, we are able to determine the specific cause of the digestive issue and use the proper nutrition to correct the imbalance. Contact us today for your appointment at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. Or visit us at maryjanemack.com. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. Would you like assistance on your soul's journey? We invite you to explore the new Alchemy of the Goddesses Center located in Auburn, Washington. A sacred space for healing sessions, classes, crystals, books, and many other tools to assist you in reaching your full divine potential. Working together with compassion and love. Find out more about the new center. Visit alchemyofthegoddesses.com. That's alchemyofthegoddesses.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a healthy relationship filled with inspiration? You might just be on the verge, on the verge of attracting your soulmate. Tune in each month to The Laura Richer Show, where dating coach Laura Richer and co-host matchmaker Peggy Bennett share tools for using your dating breakdown for a relationship breakthrough. For more information, visit richerhealinghypnosis.com. Welcome back, my beautiful listeners. I am here with uh, Kane and Cody Pearson. They are a dynamic duo uh, who have found their way um, from hurt and healing from the murders of their father and their uncle. And they have taken their grief and they have literally dug from the depths of pain and grief and started what is called the Two Brothers a Pearson Project. You guys, what is it? What? Where did you come up with the name? I mean, <laughs> I can kind of get an idea, but I'm sure I might be wrong. How did you guys come up with the name? All right. Two Brothers. Um, is is just as it sounds. It's about two brothers, my father, Kenneth L. Pearson Sr., and my uncle, Anthony L. Pearson Sr., who were both murdered due to gun violence. So what Two Brothers is, is our nonprofit organization founded Friday, actually, will make it a year for us um, after we lost both of them due to gun violence. Uh, we created two brothers to not only, you know, bring awareness to gun violence, but we solely want to focus on the immediate family who, who lost somebody due to gun violence and trying to help them through their grieving process. So when you guys say you're going to help like the immediate family, before gun violence even happens, what do you say to those people who are 
who have guns, who are contemplating, like, I don't even know if that's a contemplation. How do you help the immediate family? What do you guys do? You go in, do you help them with the grieving process? What do you guys do when when someone is, is murdered? Well, we provide them with coping mechanisms as well as offering grief counseling, support groups, um, we, and, and, and sometimes I, I don't want to like, I don't want to get, make it seem like we're just against guns because we're not, because we do want to offer CCW courses as well as providing gun safety as well as gun handling, you know, Beautiful. and training for, for those but people like as well. I like what you guys are saying. I, I, I like what you're saying because it's not the gun that is killing the person, the the gun doesn't get up and kill someone. It's the person. So like you guys were saying, the mental stability or the mental instability of someone is what is causing. And usually when somebody picks up a gun and they're that, it's out of fear, you guys. They want to just get rid of that that fear of that. It's not that they hate that person. It's that they want to escape from that fear. That is my thought. And so... You guys, I love what you're doing. And so, Cody, you were saying before break that you guys were like wanting to do some speaking engagements to what what else are you guys doing besides going and helping with the grief counseling? What else are you guys looking at at promoting? Um, we also are yeah, looking into uh, speaking engagements so we can do some educational seminars about just gun violence alone and also grief. I feel like just like social studies and math are taught in school, I feel like grief should be implemented into our our education because one thing for sure is that death is inevitable. So we are all going to have to deal with losing someone because of death. And it is so important. If you don't mind, can I give you a brief uh, background story? Oh, of course. Okay, so it's August 23rd, 2015. Mom and dad uh, packed us up and moved us down for movement week uh, at college. So we go get furniture. We move our furniture in. We call some friends. They help us move furniture in as well. And so we got all moved in. My that was that Friday. We talked to my dad that Sunday and he just wanted to know how we were settling in and told us to call him Monday after class to know how class went. Can I told you all briefly briefly about that? So yes, we both talked to him four hours before he got pronounced dead. And so that that's the first day of the semester. It's Monday. We talk to him, we tell him how the first day went, and then we lose him four hours later. So the next day we instantly go to our instructors and we let them know like what happened and they empathized with us and they told us that they understood if we wanted to drop classes and, and it's still the beginning of the semester and that they understood. We didn't really like that. So we went and talked to a counselor on campus and he told us that in quote, I would pack up all my things and I would move back to Ohio. So aside from the first two weeks of schoolwork that we were fighting to make up, we were also fighting ourselves and the ability to fill and the ability to cope and the ability to grieve properly. We didn't understand that we needed the help and guidance navigating our grieving process as well as our schoolwork and ended up failing the subsequent semesters. So as uh, from a broad from down the line, we would love to partner up with mental health professionals and school systems to try and get into the school systems where we can help with children that have lost someone and help them cope and grieve as well as stay in school because we, we detested his advice to just pack up and go back to Ohio. We, we wanted to persevere and we wanted to finish school and it, we want to provide that for someone because we didn't have that. So if anyone is in school grieving, 
we want to provide that support as well as help them with continuing to navigate through school. Excellent. I love you guys. I love what you're doing. I am so proud of, of both of you. And you guys, we're, we're at the end of our show. Uh, to learn more about Cody and to learn more about Kane, you can go. They both have Facebook pages. I think you also have a Facebook page that is it Two Brothers PP? Or what is the... Um, the Facebook page, is it, uh, they can find it like Two Brothers of Pearson Project? Yes, Two okay. Brothers of Pearson Project. And you guys, that's spelled P-E-A-R-S-O-N, two is the number two, Two Brothers A Pearson Project. And they'll be uploading a lot more information, I think. Um, you'll get to see probably more of their daddy, they're more of their uncle, uh, maybe your mom. Um, I just have such a connection with this family and and you guys, it comes from somewhere, but I didn't know these guys. I had no idea. And it was just that listening to the nudges in our soul and that in the stillness is where our loved ones speak. And when we're sitting quiet enough to hear it or whatever we're doing, but in our hearts, they will speak to us. And so you guys, I'm sure you got the guidance from your dad and from your uncle to start this too. Do you believe yes, that? Definitely, definitely, for sure. Absolutely. I, I like to think of it as turning our purpose and, I mean, our pain into purpose. So any major obstacle that we go through, it is for a reason. It And you just have to learn how to channel it and, and turn it into a purpose. I love that. What a great way to end our show, you guys. Thank you both. To Kane and Cody Pearson, I love you both, love and you. I may see I you at Sandusky. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you, you, Angie. I love you. Bye. Love thank you. you. Thank, thank you for having us, listeners. Oh, and you'll see more of Cody and Kane. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss. Tune in every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and a willingness to keep an open mind about everything that anything is possible. Tune in every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and a willingness to keep an open mind about everything that anything is possible, even in death. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit AngieCorbettKuyper.com. That's AngieCorbettKuyper.com. See you next time.